What is up, book nerds? My name is Hillary, and welcome to, or welcome back to my channel. It is the beginning of another month, and I'm so excited because it is October. We have so many things coming up. Two of my daughters have birthdays this month. We have Halloween coming up. And just to get into the spooky season, I'm hoping to read a lot of thrillers and horrors this month. And I'm excited to see what my... TBR ends up being from my monthly TBR game. So without further ado, let's get into it. And before this video starts, don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe. And let's get right so into it. So pick number one. Let's see. Let's hope this is nice to me. It's going to be... An audiobook. I really don't feel like picking an audiobook now. If I want to do an audiobook, I'll listen to another book I already have on this TBR. So since I'm going to skip this one, I'll just add a sixth book to this pick. As you guys know, I do five original picks unless I skip one of my sticks on here. So I'm skipping this one, so I'm adding another pick to this. Alright, pick number... Technically pick number one, so let's do it again. A retelling or a twisted tale. So this could be any book that is a retelling of some sort or I usually have these twisted tale books but I haven't been feeling like reading those so let me see what I got and go from there. Alright so for retelling I am choosing A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass. This is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast and this will be a reread for me and I know it was on my TBR from last month, so you all know I have to do a punishment pick, which is fine, but this one I meant to get to, but I had so many other books that I read this month, and I want to take my time reading it to annotate it, but I'm excited to see what I think of the second time around reading this book, and I'm excited to get to it. So on that note, let's get to my punishment pick for the month of October, since I did not read all of the books on my TBR this last month. Here's the cup. And the punishment prompt is a book over 500 pages. I will pick a book for this at the end so I can see what I already have. So let's get to pick number two of this TBR game and see what I get. Alright, this is a paperback, so that means any paperback book I can choose from. So I'm excited for this prompt because I can choose a thriller that I want to read. Alright, so for the prompt paperback, I chose the book The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. I've had this one for, I think, over a year. I think I got it last year during this time. And I've just been putting off reading it, and I'm excited to get to it. Um, I don't know much about it, but on the back it says, The newly renovated hotel Lay Summit, a former sanatorium high in the Swiss Alps, has long been plagued by dark rumors. When Detective Ellen War Warner's estranged brother Isaac and his fiance, Lore, Lori, I think, <laughs> invite her to celebrate their engagement at the hotel. Ellen reluctantly accepts. Arriving in the midst of threatening storm, Ellen immediately feels on edge. And when Lori suddenly vanishes, Ellen must trust her instincts if they hope to find her. When the snow cuts off all access to Lace Summit, the remaining guests start to panic. Then another woman disappears, and she's the only person who could have warned them of just how much danger they are all in. This one sounds so good, and I've heard great things about it, and I cannot wait to finally read this and see what I think. Alright, so pick number three is going to be a romance. So this doesn't have to be strictly a romance book. As long as the book has romance in it, then I can pick that one. So let me go see what I can find. Alright, so for the plot romance, I found a book that's more fantasy but has some romance aspects in it. 
And I have been trying to read this book for the past three months, and I've been tandem reading it with another one. And the book I'm choosing is Empire of Storms by Sarah J. Mass. I have been meaning to get to this, but it's such a chunker that it's going to take me a while. And with tandem reading it between this one and Tower of Dawn, it just gets a little boring, especially Tower of Dawn. I do not... I'm not enjoying that book as much as I would if I just sat and read Empire of Storms. But yeah, so this is my pick for romance. Alright, pick number four. Is a book gifted to you. See, I don't know if I have very many books left that have been gifted to me. Ugh. You know what? I'll just add another book onto this stack. So it's going to be seven books instead of six. Great. <laughs> so again, pick number four. Is... A memoir or a true story? I got the exact book that I want to read for this. Let me go grab it. Alright, so the book that I picked for memoir or a true story, or it can be an autobiography, is The Autobiography of Jack the Ripper by James Carnack. This is in Jack the Ripper's own words, The Confession of the World's Most Infamous Killer. I love reading books about serial killers for some odd reason, and with it being October, I think it's the perfect time to read this, and it's just over, let's see, 280 pages, so that won't take me long to read, but I really think I'm going to enjoy this book, and I'm excited to finally get to it. Alright, so pick number five is... Your choice. So I can pick any book that I want to go on the stack. If I was smart, I'd go with a small book, but I never said I was very smart. So let's go see what I have. Okay, so the book that I chose for my choice was Notes on an Execution by Dania Kukovka. I've heard great things about this. I know Katie from Katie Colson, she read it and absolutely loved this book. And they say if you listen to it on audiobook, it's even better. But I'll probably just physically read it because I don't know if my Libby has it, but if they do, I might follow along with the book listening to it. But this one, I think from what I've heard, is about a guy who is on death row and he is talking to the victim's family about what happened and all that I'm pretty sure but I'm not 100% sure on that but with it being so hyped up I'm excited to read this and to see what I think about it and yeah so this is for pick number five all right pick number six is a book with one more title. I don't know if I have any, but let me check. Okay, so I could not find a book with a one word title that I own. So instead of seven books, we're going to pick eight books. And this is going to be a crazy TBR because I'm still going to be doing filling prompts for Stabathon, which is happening in October. So I hope some of these will fit into those prompts, but we'll see. So let's get back to this. So pick number six a trilogy. So a book in a trilogy that can be one that I've already started or one that I want to start. So let me go see what I have. Alright, so for a trilogy, this book is one that I've been wanting to get to so bad, and I read the first two this year and love them, but the last book is As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson. So this is the third book in A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which is about this girl named... Oh, what's her name? Gosh, 
turn it. Uh, Pip. And she's trying to solve this case that has been going on, going on in her town for a couple of years on if what happened, the person who was murdered is what actually happened. And so you're following along with that one. But these, this one is, I believe she's trying to solve a case where somebody is threatening her. And I'm excited to get to this one, and it's kind of a chunker. It's over 400 pages, so I am going to try and get to this one and see what I think. But I think I will get to it because it is one of my most anticipated reads to get to, but I just have been pushing it off. I've been pushing it off because I just don't want to be disappointed, but I've heard great things about it. So fingers crossed that this is a five star because that's what I'm predicting. Alright, so pick number seven. Is books on 2022 list. So I have a list in my bullet journal of books that I want to read before the end of 2022. And let me go see what I have on that and pick a book pick a book from there if I can talk. Alright, so for book on my 2022 list. The, book, the one that I picked is um, Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. I am so excited to get to this book because I read her Kingdom of the Wicked series and absolutely love it. I need to read the last book in that series or the newest one that's coming out. But this one, I'll just read what's on the back of this book. It says, he murdered women in cold blood. He terrorized an entire city. He haunted those of us who hunted him down. But despite all these horrors in the end, I could not deny it. I was the girl who loved the Ripper. So I'm excited to get to this. I think she just wants to solve cases and do all that and figure out why these people are dying. Because her, I believe it's her uncle owns one of those places that takes in dead bodies, I think. But I don't know. I'm excited to get to this. It is just over 300 pages, so it shouldn't be too bad of a read. All right, and my last pick, hopefully, pick number eight. Right? Yes, pick number eight. And that is... It says banned book, but I don't really have any more books that are banned that I want to read this month. So I guess we're adding another one on for nine picks. Okay, so pick number eight again. And that is an adaptation. I got this. Perfect book for it. The book that I picked for adaptation is one that is coming out on Netflix this year sometime. I don't know when. I think it's in October or November. But that book is... The School for Good and Evil by Saman Chanany. I'm sorry if I'm butchering that. This is kind of like a magical book. I heard that. But it says, This year, best friends Sophie and Agatha are about to discover where all the lost children go. The fabled School for Good and Evil. Where ordinary boys and girls are trained to be fairy tale heroes and villains. As the most beautiful girl in... Gaveldon, Sophie has dreamed of being kidnapped into an, an enchanted world her whole life. With her pink dresses, glass slippers, and devotion to good deeds, she knows she'll earn top marks at the school for good and graduate a storybook princess. Meanwhile, Agatha, with her shapeless black frocks, wicked pet cat, and dislike of nearly everyone, seems a natural fit for the school for evil. But when the two girls are swept into the endless woods, they find their fortunes reversed and they'll quickly find that the only way out of the fairy tale is to live through it. This sounds so good and I believe it's a middle grade, so it shouldn't take me that long to read. And it is close to 500 pages. So I'm excited to get to this one and to see what I think. Alright, and last and final pick, no matter what, is... A book that intimidates you. I have plenty of those. Let's see what I pick. And again, for the second month in the row, in a row, I chose *The House Across the Lake* by Riley Seger. 
This one is one that I've been wanting to get to but just been pushing it off because it has mixed reviews about it and I've heard he wrote it more for himself than for his readers so I'm a little scared to read it but it says be careful what you watch for. Casey Fletcher, a recently widowed actress trying to escape a streak of bad bad pass, bad press, has retreated to the peace and quiet of her family's lake house in Vermont, armed with a pair of binoculars and several bottles of bourbon. She passes the time watching Tom and Catherine Royce, the glamorous couple living in the house across the lake. They make for good viewing. A tech innovator, Tom is powerful and a former model, Catherine is gorgeous. One day on the lake, Casey saves Catherine from drowning and the two strike up a budding friendship. But the more they get to know each other and the longer Casey watches, the more it becomes clear that Catherine and Tom's marriage isn't as perfect as it appears. When Catherine suddenly vanishes, Casey immediately suspects Tom of foul play. What she doesn't realize is that there's more to the story than meets the eye and that shocking secret can lurk beneath the most placid of surfaces. This sounds really good and I have high hopes for it because I love some of his books that I've read and I've disliked some that I read. But yeah, this is going to be my last pick for my TBR and now I just have to find my book for my punishment prompt. Alright, so for a book over 500 pages for my punishment prompt, I chose Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Nero. I've heard mixed reviews about this one, but I'm excited to get to it, and I think it's the perfect time and season for it. But it says, England, 1882, in Victorian London, two children with mysterious powers are hunted by a figure of darkness, a man made of smoke. 16-year-old Charlie Ovid, despite a brutal childhood in Mississippi, doesn't have a scar on him. His body heals itself whether he wants it to or not. Marlo, a foundling from a railway freight car, shines with a strange bluish light. He can melt or mend flesh. When a jaded female detective is recruited to escort them to safety, all three begin a journey into the nature of difference and belonging in the shadowy edges of monstrous. What follows is a true story of wonder and betrayal from the gaslit streets of London at the wooden theaters of Meiji era Tokyo to an eerie estate outside Edinburgh where other children with gifts and the talents have been gathered. There the world of dead and the world of living threaten to collide. And as secrets within the institute unfurl, Marlo, Charlie, and the rest of the talents will discover the truth about their abilities and the nature of what is stalking them, that the worst monsters sometimes come bearing the sweetest gifts. This sounds really good. It's a huge book. It is well over 500, it's over 600 pages long. So I think I got that prompt settled. And I am just crazy for wanting to read some of these books, but whatever. And that is it for this video. I still have to pick the books that I'm reading for Stabathon, and I'm hoping to vlog for that full week. Well, yeah, it's a six-day readathon, and I'm excited for it and can't wait for it because October is my favorite time of year because it's fall and spooky vibes and thriller books and all that. So, yeah, that is it for this video. Like I said at the beginning, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in another video. Bye!